What's up guys, Matt with Bleep and Jeep. Today we're going to play around with cars. It's always a great job when you can say you do that for a living, right? But what I want to show you today is what to do, what not to do when loading your trailer. Whether you're doing it with a vehicle, your motorcycle, ATV, or just a U-Haul. Things can go terribly wrong very quickly and you don't want this to happen to you. So stay tuned and check this out. Alright, so there's a lot of videos out there that kind of explain how to load a trailer. In fact, I've done one, and you ought to check it out if you haven't already. But what I want to show you is real-life examples. I thought about doing this on the highway, but then I thought, nah, that's probably not the safest bet. So how about on the treadmill instead? So right here I've got a car loaded up properly. We're going 60 miles an hour. And we have to make a very quick correction and check out how well that does. Other than the car not being tied down, <laughs> it handles pretty well, like you would imagine. And that's because of the 60-40 rule, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. But what happens if you backload your trailer? And that means putting too much weight on the back. Well, you can see right there, when you backload your trailer, Things get really sketchy really fast. When you have too much weight on the back of a trailer, this is called trailer sway. And this can happen whether you hit a pothole, whether you have to swerve for a deer, for some other oncoming traffic, or some jackhole just getting in your way, or even a blown tire, whether that be on your trailer or your truck. This is what can happen. And if you step it up to 80 miles an hour, it happens even quicker and even faster. You can see things are a little sketchier even with the trailer loaded properly. But load it wrong and things get really out of whack really quickly. What does that mean? Well, it means you should slow down for one thing when you're pulling a trailer. But also it means you need to load your trailer properly. So... We'll talk about that here in a minute, but let me just shut up real quick and let you guys watch this and see for yourselves. Alright, let's really ramp things up to 100 miles per hour in our little mock scenario here. It's actually 10 miles an hour on the treadmill. Now at this speed, just a minor correction, a minor turn of the steering wheel, and as you can imagine, it takes you a lot farther than if you were going 10 miles an hour. So with a trailer behind you, things can get messed up really fast at this speed and you should never go that fast when towing but we're just ramping things up here to show you how much more violent things can be at speed especially when towing things happen very very quickly the faster you go Here's a little tip, if you ever get in a fishtail situation like this, do not panic and hit your brakes. What you want to do is reach down and apply the trailer brakes only from your brake controller box. There should be a little button down here, you press that and it will lock up the brakes on your trailer and straighten things out. You do not want to panic and hit the brakes on your truck, that will just make things much worse. Alright, let's slow things down here a little bit. 
and change up our model. I think this bigger scale model is going to help you visualize what's happening here. And if you are a smart person, you should be able to see uh, what's going wrong here and see why this is a bad idea to load your trailer improperly. And since this scale model doesn't have much weight to it, we're going to add a three pound weight right underneath it. So, as you can see, that was a little too far forward. This is just about right. 60 up front, 40 behind the axle. So that's the trailer axle. You want to be 60% of your weight in front of it, 40% behind it. Now what happens when you load that weight too far back, as we're doing now? Well, the trailer is actually picking up on the rear tires of the pulling vehicle. And that means there's no traction there, and all of a sudden things are going to go very wrong. What happens if you load it too far forward? Well, let's find out. Do you see what's happening there? The trailer is pushing down on the rear axle and pulling up the front axle, and it actually is lifting off the ground right now. In that scenario, you're going to have very poor steering and very poor braking. You're not going to be able to brake or steer at all because most of your braking comes from the front axle and all of your steering obviously. Uh oh. Alright so this next experiment I wasn't quite happy with that last one showing the decrease in steering. Obviously I've got no braking on this but I can show you what happens to the steering. So right now I've got it loaded semi-correctly and you can see I am moving it back and forth with the steering of the RC car there and it's very controllable. I've got a lot of control left to right. But what happens if you take that weight and you move it too far forward? Now all of a sudden I have no control over where I'm going. You can see I'm turning the wheels but not a whole lot is happening. It only catches when it comes back down and bounces along the ground and that does happen in real life. If you have a shift in all your weight or if um, you just load improperly you're going to have your front axle lifting up off the ground and this changes too when you're going uphill or downhill so keep that in mind so just because you load it and it looks good on flat ground doesn't mean it's going to stay that way <laughs> just like that Damn. Now let's slow things down a little bit so that's about right 60-40 but let's slowly move this weight forward and as you can see as you move that weight forward the front tires the front of the truck lifts up and that's bad not just for steering and braking but also for your headlight aiming at night now let's move that weight back and you can see the rear start to lift up and eventually you can lift it off the ground if you get enough weight back there now how does this work with a real vehicle on there? Well, the heavier it is up front, the worse off you're going to be. Put that in the back, the same thing, except in reverse. Now what happens if you load it properly, 60-40? Well, nothing, because your truck and your trailer are working in tandem. The trailer takes all the weight, and the truck does not. Now what do I mean about this 60-40 rule? Well, draw a straight line down the axle of the trailer and 60% of the weight should be in front of that axle and 40% of the weight should be behind. Now that doesn't matter whether you're loading a vehicle or loading a U-Haul full of your furniture. It doesn't matter. And if you've got a double axle trailer, draw that line right down the middle of the two axles. And as always, you should keep that load centered in the middle of the trailer, not off to the left or right. Another thing I should mention is that most cars, trucks, jeeps, equipment, the motor or the engine is in the front. So most of the weight is going to be in that area. So keep that in mind and visualize that as you're loading that you want the vehicle to be kind of back a little bit because if the motor is in the front most of the weight is going to be there. Now let's talk about tongue weight. What is tongue weight? Well 
It is the amount of weight on your tongue of your truck, the receiver hitch basically, and it should be between 10 and 15 percent of the overall, the gross trailer weight. So that's the trailer and the equipment that you're carrying. So if all that weighs 10,000 pounds, then you should have between 1,000 and 1,500 pounds on your hitch. If your Jeep that you're towing or whatever you're towing in your trailer is 5,000 pounds, then you should have about 500 pounds on your tongue. Now the best way to load a trailer is on flat ground with your truck in neutral and a second person holding the brake. But the most important thing is do not load on a hill. If you don't believe me, this has happened to a lot of people. Just talk to them, but here is an example. Just watch this. <laughs> you don't want this to happen to you folks. It's happened to me and it's not fun. Alright guys, so this video was just for fun and to show you what not to do, but if you want to see how to actually strap down your Jeep or truck or whatever you're carrying, check out this video. It's one I did a while back. I'll leave a link down below in the description. And in that video, there's kind of a hot topic, and that is I don't recommend cross-strapping your vehicle. And there's a lot of people who don't agree with that, but in the next video, I want to show you why. So make sure to subscribe so that you can find that video when it comes out next week. Thanks a lot guys. Hit the thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you in the next video. Is that I came from the mud, desert on my hands, strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand, oh I've been running from the law, hope they won't shoot me down soon. Catch me howling at the moon